혈치과 원장 박정철입니다. Greetings, I'm Dr. Park j o n g c h e o l of Hyo Dental Clinic. Today I'm going to talk about socket preservation. Let's take a look at the case as we have this discussion. It's been about two years for this patient. Number 27 was floating completely. So I recommended extraction and implant treatment, but the patient was very hesitant about extraction. The patient just asked me to prevent any pain from occurring. So endodontic treatment was done, and the patient was using this teeth, and with time, the tooth fractured, and the patient came back. When I looked at the x-ray image, the tooth continues to float and it looks quite difficult to do immediate implant placement after extraction. The patient was 65-year-old female patient. She was very scared about dental treatment. The plan was to do extraction and to wait a little bit and then place implant. In that way, implant can be placed in a more easier manner. That was the implant placement plan. Look at the CT. On the buccal side, there's complete resorption and there's a bit of bone on the septum side. You may consider immediate implant placement utilizing the septum, but considering the thickness of septum, if you place implant, there can be dehiscence defect on a palatal and buccal area, or there can be horizontal defect. There's a high possibility of that, and it's not easy doing sinus lift. Those of you who do this very well, it may be easy, but I thought it would be difficult. It's quite close to sinus and pre-op CT. It shows this kind of condition and extraction was performed. In the case of fractured tooth, if you just perform extraction, then it can continue to fracture. Therefore, you need to do segmentation. When you do socket preservation, the most important thing is to do a great extraction. Extraction has been done, and you need to remove the granulation tissue within the socket. And I'm sure you'll be able to get the good idea of it when you look at the clip, but you can use the blade to minimize marginal bone damage to remove the granulation tissue. The blade is used while in contact with a bone. In one whole lump, the granulation tissue can be removed. Even if you use this technique, it is not removed 100%, therefore you need to do curettage. Then you not need to open flap and perform socket preservation in a more easier manner. In the case of this patient in number 6, flap was slightly reflected in the distal area, the interdental papilla area. The reason is because the entire buccal bone is resorbed and I want to make a wall of some sort here. I wanted to use a stiff collagen membrane, but there's a bone sticking out here. I thought it would be difficult to apply the membrane, therefore I decided to reflect the flap on this side slightly to put the membrane in more easily. For that reason, the flap was reflected slightly and osmium hard membrane was applied here. After that, AOS collagen was applied. There's a lot of discussion about whether to use membrane or not when you use a xenograft containing collagen. Foregoing membrane may or may not produce ideal results. So I tried to use membrane, but at the same time there are cases where it's okay not to use them. It's very difficult to say at this moment to say what is better. If the defect is significant, if you don't use membrane, then it will not be really favorable. There's no set criteria as to when to apply a membrane, and this should be determined based on surgeon's experience and knowledge. If you're concerned, you can apply a membrane. I'm sure you'll be able to understand better if you watch the video clip, but I have used two AES collagen. 
one on the buccal side because the defect is significant and I've cut the areas collagen and placed it towards the palatal side. There's a still some residual palatal walls, so I've cut it vertically and applied it. I'm sure you'll be able to see it on the surgical clip. When applying AOS collagen, you need to trim it to the right to form and apply it. Then you'll be able to use it more conveniently. I've used hidden X suture. You can either use crisscross suture or figure of eight suture as well. I've used hidden X suture because I wanted to press AOS collagen from the inside. The patient was especially concerned about the surgical site. You don't need to use the copac, but I've used it so it is more easy for the patient to manage. This is not mandatory. This is two weeks after sutures have been removed. If you look, after applying AOS collagen, if you do open healing, very nice soft healing can be observed in most cases. Rather than Doing open healing with collagen membrane, you can get better results by doing open healing with AOS collagen. In terms of soft tissue healing, AOS collagen can be of great help. This is post-op CT. In the area where there were barely any buccal bone left, you can see that AOS collagen is positioned there and on the palatal side, albeit thin, there's still a bit of palatal bone. AOS collagen was applied on the palatal side as well. You can see that AOS collagen have been applied on the defect. You'd be able to see more specific details via surgical clip. I will see you